Hello and shalom, I'm Jara of Clay 9 and this is a video about Sukkot, a Jewish holiday, or we can call it a biblical holy day that God commands his people to keep. So, in the spirit of Sukkot, Chag Sameach, in Hebrew, Happy Holiday. Literally, Chag is festival, Sameach is joyful, so it's Joyful festival. Since it's a cold, we say, Hug Sukkot Sameach. Joyful Sukkot festival. Happy Sukkot, basically. <laughs> but, what is Sukkot? What does it mean? What does it have to do with Hanukkah or Christmas? Okay, so the best way, the easy way to explain Sukkot and the spirit of Sukkot to someone who doesn't know much about it is by comparing it to Christmas. And Hanukkah. And this might sound a little strange, but if you take Christmas and everything associated with Christmas, okay, and then you strip it of everything worldly and pagan, you take that away, what are you left with? You're left with the biblical stories of Yahushua's birth and the events around that, the nativity story, and you're left with messianic prophecy of the coming messiah, and that's good. And you're also left with, you know, the fun, the joy, the festivities, the family being together, and the love, and when the birth of Jesus is celebrated with a sincere heart, God is pleased with that. So if you take Christmas and you um, take everything holy, good, of good report, everything noble, everything praiseworthy about it, and you get rid of everything that is pagan and unholy, you are left with something good. And what you are left with is what Sukkot is all about, and it is part of Sukkot. Now the second thing about Hanukkah, Hanukkah is that Hanukkah is actually the second Sukkot. So everyone knows a lot about Christmas and a bit about Hanukkah, the miracle of oil. There was oil for only one day, and yet it lasted eight days in the temple. There's a lot more to Hanukkah than that. But everyone knows it's a festival of lights. You know, it's eight days long. Well, these are things that it has in common with Sukkot. Hanukkah is the second Sukkot. That is what the book of Second Maccabees basically calls it, and that is also what the Bible calls it, but in different words. Wait, wait, wait. Before I go on, I need to stop to tell you a very important secret. Secret. <laughs> we all know that Jesus wasn't really born around Christmas. Most people kind of know this. But here's the secret. Did you know he was born during Sukkot? And you can prove it with the Bible. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that now. But it's true, and he was most likely born on the first day of Sukkot. What is Sukkot a celebration of? Well, there's a lot of things you can hear on the internet or you can learn wherever. But in my opinion, in a nutshell, Sukkot is a celebration of the kingdom of God, in a nutshell. There's a lot more to it than that, of course. Now, in the Bible, there's this overwhelming theme from cover to cover, and it is the heart of God towards mankind, and it is, to me also, the kingdom of God, what the kingdom of God is. And these are these words that you find throughout Scripture. I'm paraphrasing, but this is it. I will be their God, and they will be my people, and I will dwell among them. That is the kingdom of God. Yeah? And that is what Sukkot is all about. That's what the kingdom of God is. I will be their God, they will be my people. And Sukkot, I will dwell among them. So, not only is it a celebration of the kingdom of God, but the most important part, you could say, of the kingdom of God is to be born again is the Messiah. The Savior of the world, the Redeemer of Israel, the one and only way to God the Father, the Messiah. Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, you have to remember, 
He is a Jew, was a Jew, king of the Jews, born of a Jewish virgin. virgin. Um, the angel Gabriel came down from heaven and said, this is the name that he should be called, and it happens to be a Hebrew name. Yeshua is king of the Jews, the root and the offspring of David. King David, he's like the greatest of the kings of the Jews. And uh, yet, there is something greater, someone greater. The Messiah, who is called Ben David, the son of David, but he is also, he's also the Lord of David. David called him Lord. So Yeshua, he is the king of the Jews, the root and the offspring of David, and he has a Hebrew name. And in its fullest, unabbreviated form, the correct form, is Yahushua, or Yahushua. The pronunciation doesn't matter, as long as Yah is in there. So, Yahshua is also good. <laughs> now, the Son of God became a man, born of a virgin, by the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit. That is what Sukkot is all about. I will be their God, they will be my people, and I will dwell among them. The Son of God dwells among us as a man, as one like a son of man, but he is not the son of any man. I mentioned Sukkot is biblical, that means it's in the Bible, there's scripture about it. Leviticus 23 is a good place to start if you want to read about the Jewish feasts, the holy days. It has all seven of the holy days instituted by God through Moses, and then there's two more that are instituted by the prophets later, instituted by God through the prophets, and that's Purim and Hanukkah, but we'll talk about that later. So, there's seven in Leviticus 23, the weekly Shabbat is also mentioned. The last of the seven is, you guessed it, Sukkot. What does Leviticus 23 have to say about Sukkot? Three main points I'll say. The first is that it is a feast unto Yahweh for seven days. The first day is to be a day of rest, and the eighth day, which is like an extra day, is also to be a day of rest. In Hebrew, it's Shemini Atzayit, which means the eighth assembly. And in ancient times, that was also known as, um, that was also Simchat Torah, which means rejoicing in the Torah. But in modern times, that's the following day, Simchat Torah, and that is when the Torah portion starts over. The Bible reading plan, the yearly Bible reading plan for the Torah starts again. So that's the first point, that it's seven days. The second point is it's also the Harvest Festival, and God says, celebrate this with the ingathering of the harvest. And then he gives kind of some specific instructions that involve produce from the land of Israel, a goodly fruit. Um, in this case, um, it's the citron, the etrag, the citron, and then the palm, the lulav, in Hebrew, and the palm. And that, actually, there's four species of plant involved. And um, when you're outside Israel, it's harder, the further you are from Israel, the harder it is to do that, exactly. But anyway, the point is, you celebrate with the harvest. The third point is, you celebrate with Sukkot. <laughs> well, the word Sukkot is plural of another word. It means that is Sukkah, and that means temporary shelter. Hmm. Let me clarify. The Israelites were in the desert for 40 years in the wilderness, and they dwelt in Sukkot. They each had a Sukkah. A Sukkah is a temporary shelter, like a tent, a tabernacle, a booth, a stable, all different words for basically the same idea, a temporary shelter. You see, the same way God saved you and He brought you and delivered you and saved you from the lifestyle of sin and from sin, He saved, He delivered the Israelites out of Egypt and then He provided for them and protected them in the wilderness for 40 years. And so this is what Leviticus 23 is saying here. It's saying this is to be a memorial to remind you that I brought you out of Egypt. And I protected you and I led you in the wilderness. So the third point is to build yourself a sukkah 
and live in it for seven days. Obviously, you can't live in it seven days if you're not in the right climate. <laughs> if you're in a really cold place, you can't live in there, right? So you do what you can. So it's weather permitting. Some people, they will only take meals in there. Sometimes they'll sleep in there. It depends on what you can do. You do what you can. All right, so as far as sukkah goes, there's no reason to be legalistic. Obviously, if you're not in the right kind of climate, you can't live in a sukkah for seven days, right? So weather permitting, you know, you can sleep in there or maybe take some meals in there. Okay? You do what you can. If you, leave with un if you live with unbelievers, you can't necessarily build a big sukkah in the yard. <laughs> so you might have to do it in your bedroom. But obviously, if you can build it outside, then you should do that, right? Also, the further you are from Israel, the less likely you have access to, a, you know, a citron and the palm and the lulav and everything that is involved in that, the four species. So, again, you do what you can, and you do not get legalistic. For those of you who are considering celebrating Sukkot instead of Christmas, you can recycle, you know, a lot of your Christmas decorations and call them Sukkot decorations, or call them Hanukkah decorations. For example, Hanukkah and Sukkot are both called the Festival of Lights, and you can use Christmas lights and call them Sukkot lights. It works. It really does. Now, instead of, you know, putting up a tree and decorating it, which is a practice condemned in the Bible, you know, through the prophet Jeremiah, for example, you can build a sukkah. And sukkah, sometimes they can become more elaborate and they can become very decorative. You can decorate them. So, there you go. There's something fun there. Um, you can give presents at sukkot. There's nothing in the Bible against it.